Hello, everyone. So Welcome back to the Ten CNSP interview. Today we have、um, one of Zemrong's most beloved artists. She is our gem, and、uh, we are happy to have her today for this interview. And she is none other than Azina Pamai Marak, who, besides her busy, busy schedule, has taken out a time for us. So let's tune in, people, and see what she has to say. We've been waiting for this interview. Here we are. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself, like a brief introduction? Yes.、Yeah. My name is Azina, and I am a Rongmai lady. But I got married to a Garo guy, and his name is Chingang Marak. And I have a little girl, and we, my little family, is residing here in Laos. Wonderful, wonderful. So, yeah. Let's start off with、um, what made you to be a musician in the first place. What made me to be、um, musician would be that would be、uh, it's just loving music and pursuing it passionately.、Yeah. Um, right. That is just so sweet and short and. It completes everything. <laughs> You're welcome. So, how would you describe music? Music is a language that reaches our soul, you know, our innermost being, you know, in those places, deep places that words and different other ways cannot reach. Yeah, and it's a gift of God. Right. So, being a musician, what? Are the disadvantages, or what are the challenges that you come across most often? Well, I have two points for that. And、uh, number one is not being understood,、mm -hmm. because musicians, whenever they're going to perform one song on stage, they give you all, and、uh, when they practice, you know, they give their time, their energy, and、mm -hmm. they have to sacrifice a lot of things. And sometimes they have to take their own conveyances to go and. It's a lot of it's a lot that takes away from a person to prepare to present one song,、mm -hmm. and unfortunately and ironically, sometimes it's just paid back with just the word "thank you" and nothing else. And、okay. so I think the depth of effort and and the passion given in is very rarely understood. And so that's that is、um, one of. The hardships and disadvantage that one of the disadvantages that our musicians would encounter. And secondly, actually, you know, music it changes, it touches, and reforms the whole being of a person. But it is always taken for granted. Either it be the government, or either it be the church, and so there is not enough platforms given. And so these are the couple of struggles I I think I can point out for today. Like,、uh, what do you enjoy the most being a musician? Um, just getting lost in music, <laughs> either be listening or singing. You know, just getting lost and just getting drowned and drenched in the music. Thank you. So、uh, you've been a vocal、um, instructor or teacher, I should say, as well in Pad Thai, right? If I can remember. Yes, yes, I was for.、Uh, I think it was for a couple of years.、Mm -hmm. It was a couple, of, yeah, for for some time. Yeah, I was. Okay, so what would you say is the best way to improve the vocal? Practice. Okay. Okay, so the young drum singers out there, just practice and practice and practice more, okay, to improve your vocal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what is the best advice that you have ever received in your life? Um, number one, Matthew six chapter thirty three, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. And number two is always be humble. Yeah, that's great. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. So the next question will be,、um, how would you like to rate Zhejiang in music comparing to other tribes? As、uh, you have been married to other tribes, you might be having a lot more to say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are better. <laughs> We're better, and I'm so proud of our people. I'm so proud of our of our Zelimong people. You know, I mean, look at look at people like、uh, James or Alam Lehirang or Lulu or Jensu Monta or or you know, these are just a few handful of people that I can think of right now in my brain because they are just up there on the surface、uh, 
of what I have seen, but there are so many other people more who are extremely talented, different other good guitarists, pianists, and different other musicians who are really good too, you know? Um, that's, we, we are way better than other people. We just have to be confident. Yeah, that's confidence is the key, I would say. Yes. So, okay, so the next question is that, um, what are the other things you do most apart from singing? Oh, well, these days it's parenting, you know, just taking care of my little girl and just trying to get this little institution run. Institution is in my little institution of my little family. Okay. Trying to keep this running, yeah, because it is very involving to take care of another human being um, and to make sure that, you know, she has enough in every aspect. Yeah, it, it just takes away everything from you. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the first thing you see about someone when you first meet? Okay, I, I think I would uh, try to look out for their smiles. I think, yeah, naturally the way people smile, it, it just attracts me. <laughs> so great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm gonna be, have to be careful with my smile, I think, now. <laughs> you have a very nice smile. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just kidding, anyway. Is there a particular song which you regret singing anywhere? Oh, no, no, I don't think so. Because when I'm gonna sing, I do think a lot about what song to sing, whether it is appropriate for a particular function or, or you know, and so it's it's after a sorrow thinking. And so there's not one song that I regret singing, oh. no. Mm -hmm. uh, what message would you like to give to your fans and upcoming artists of our Zuyangong well, people? Well, um, well, the word fan for Azina is something that I, I cannot, I cannot, I don't know, I cannot, I cannot swallow. <laughs> but yeah, if ever there is anybody out there who happens to like my singing, then thank you. I value you so much and, uh, and uh, your support means a lot to me. And for, uh, for the upcoming artist, I would say you're doing great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah. Just be confident, keep going. Okay, so what inspired you to be a musician? Initially, I would say my parents. It would be my parents who inspired me to be a musician. I, uh, oh. My dad was a musician himself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and my mom wanted to be a musician. That's why he married. She married a musician, <laughs> and so yeah, it's it's my parents who inspired me to be a musician. Okay. So, uh, how what was their reaction when you started pursuing what they have planned for you? I know they were happy, they were proud, but then what more can mm -hmm. you say in words? Yeah. Well, their reaction would be that they are happy and mm -hmm. and they're proud of me. I know. They also know that this is not the main uh, career line that everybody would opt for, you know, but but they choose to stand for it. And then even if it's slightly different from mm -hmm. from the regular mainstream careers, it, they, they chose to stand for me and, and they supported me. And so they were just ever proud and happy. And my dad still encourages me and um, every day to continue singing and to, to do something with music, yeah. Okay, that is so great. I don't know what to say. That's just great. All right, um, so what are the two albums and how did you make it? Can you elaborate on them? Oh yeah, my my two albums, like, the, uh, actually it is, it's three, actually. The first one was produced by New Hope Ministry. Mm -hmm. That's the first ever album, you know, and, and it's produced in cassettes. Oh. And uh, the second one was um, the second one was when I graduated in the year two thousand eight. Oh. I really wanted to produce an album, and and then but there is not enough resources. Mm. My parents just gave me ten thousand rupees, but you know to record in a studio mm. uh, that itself required forty thousand. And then uh, to make a video that required another thing and to produce the CDs, to print the CD covers, mm -hmm. to write it on a CD, to buy the CD plates and everything, everything required money. And so I was, I was 22 back then, 
and then me and my sister my sister was 19 back then it was me and my sister who worked hard in raising money to produce my album and um uh, from what i had 10000 we raised yeah. we could raise to, uh, we could raise to about 80 to 90000 and wow. we could produce an album like that on our own and that is the story behind the second album well the third album is because people wanted to buy my song mm -hmm. and so there is a family who said um, they want to produce my uh, they can produce my my songs and so i said sure why not <laughs> yeah wow i mean it, isn't that beautiful like uh, when you first started and then you had all the resources with you and then you wouldn't have to struggle for anything that then the story wouldn't be that beautiful as it is and and then it, it it's just um put it in words like say um there are a lot of spices in it when you struggle for something really hard and then you get it and then there you go mm -hmm. and satisfied right yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's, that's cool. true okay thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that with us and um mm -hmm. okay so how was your experience collaborating with different singers and what is the most memorable experience uh, well uh it's it's great i always get to learn from them you know i've collaborated with different great singers great musicians and it's always been golden experience for me um, and uh, um, the most memorable experience would be, it's rather a funny one because uh, it was when I tried to perform together on a stage with Kailash Kher. That didn't go well. <laughs> that really didn't go well. But, but I was very nervous and I was very happy to be singing a Hindi song on stage. I remember I practiced a lot. It was a year after I got married and um, yeah, that was a... Uh, uh, that was a very nerve-wracking experience and then I couldn't catch a note and, and stuff like that. But that was um, a funny but uh, a memorable experience, yeah. Next question is, as a singer, what do you think can be your greatest contribution to the community? I would say my, my contribution, because I'm living here in Laos mm -hmm. and um, but thank God for internet. Everybody is so dependent on internet these right. days and um, and right now, um, I guess the best way to reach out to our community would be singing about God's love um, to, to, and, and putting up in social platforms, social media platforms or on YouTube and all. And so these days, um, I'm trying to translate a few worship songs, um, uh, which will be put up on my YouTube channel very soon. Right. Um, I'm trying to translate a song called Still, and I'm sure everybody, every young people know that song. Mm -hmm. This song is very, very uh, simple, but has got a very, very deep meaning. And I would want people, let's say the older folks who, who did not have the opportunity to learn English very well mm -hmm. and cannot sing English songs very well, I'd really like to deliver it to them too by by singing in our dialect mm -hmm. yeah and so like that maybe that's a little way some little ways that i can contribute to our community okay so can you also um share something about your lovely daughter more about her and how a mother should raise their daughter well that's a very interesting question mm -hmm. you know i'm mm, I'm glad you asked that because I'm very passionate about about my little girl and I'm very passionate on how to raise her right. Um, yeah, my little girl is two years and it's, oh. she's going to be two years and two months and so a lot of people will call terrible twos but I would, but a lot of people also call them as terrific twos, yeah. A stage of discovering, a stage of tantrums, a stage of drama and endless demands for attention and yeah it's a very crucial stage of growth i should say yeah she's at that stage very interesting stage and also very absorbing and absorbent stage right. yeah uh how a mother should raise their daughter well my daughter is just two years and so i'm not an expert in parenting um uh, yet but right now what i'm looking at is uh, uh, is I, I'm trying to look into the way that God parents us, you know, because every time 
we make a mistake that God does not always discipline. And every time we make a mess of ourselves, God does not rebuke and scold and or compare ourselves to other people. God does not pull our ears all the time or give us sticks all the time or or give us timeouts or leave us alone uh, all the time. And so, but God is very gracious and compassionate. He is very patient. Mm -hmm. And even if he has to discipline us, he disciplines us by him, by himself being there. And I thought when God is so patient with me, I should not lose out on my daughter, even if, you know, she's, uh, her crankiness and everything um, gets really tough sometimes. Yeah. And so that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Athena. And uh, I think this is uh, the last question that we have here for today. Would you like to share about any unforgettable performances of you? Well, I have performed um, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I have performed a lot of times and uh, I can't really remember uh, like there is nothing like unforgettable performance, but I do remember the last performance that I performed back in India. That was in a men, men's conference, RNBA's men's conference. It was in None, and, and I remember it was unforgettable because it was so cold. It was freezing cold, and and um, yeah, uh, it was a lot of people too, and uh, it was in the evening, and um, I, I, it was, I mean. It's unforgettable because uh, because that was the last performance that I've ever performed in India. Right. Yeah, and after that I came to Laos, and so um, after coming to Laos, I, there's no place to perform the kind of music that I do, and so their kind of music is totally different. And so I could remember that performance even better because somebody took it on video and have put it up on YouTube, mm -hmm. and so I <laughs> yeah, I think that makes it easier for me to remember. Right, right. So, how is Laos treating out there? Like, um, like just the way you said it, the environment and everything is different out there. It's unlike here in India. How are you putting up with that place? Well, um, well, at Laos is a very interesting place. You know, um, the people are very nice. The people are very nice, and the people are very polite and and respect towards each other is so is so prevalent you know they don't shout at each other and uh, and then they they don't honk they don't blow horn That's while cool. driving on the road because because they they consider it impolite you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and so they don't do that and um, yeah food we get everything here you wow. know we get everything that we uh, we eat you know we get the best oh, shoes and everything oh, oh. <laughs> and so I don't feel so far away by, uh, you know, staying here in Laos, I don't feel so far away because we get every kind of mushrooms, we get bamboo shoots, we get corn and maize, oh. and yeah, our every kind of food and every kind of forest food, forest animal oh. food that, that we eat. Um, yeah, some people are sensitive about that, so yeah, okay. the, uh, they, they eat too. Okay. Actually, they do more than us, and so so it's nice. It's nice to stay here. Going to the conclusion, is there anything else that you want to put up, or just advice, maybe? Got it. Yeah, maybe I can speak something about my uh, my YouTube channel. This That's year, I've decided to. I this year I've decided to put up more songs, uh -huh. and this year I have decided to write more songs and translate more worship songs into Brazilian wrong languages, not just wrong way. Yeah, and so um, so if you are interested, you might want to check those out for, for for updates. And so I'm trying to put like not just one, but at least two every month. And so yeah. All right. <laughs> so you hear the people actually. Each and every one of the Zilian Rong should go through that and always listen to it and also um, promote, you know. And thank you very much, Zina, for joining us today. You have been such a very blessing to us. And we are more than happy and glad to have you here today. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to wind it up here. So guys, what do you think about the video?
please comment down below all your thoughts because um, all your comments and feedbacks are counted. None of them will go ignored because we're trying to improvise with them. And um, please go and find out more about Azina Pamai in her YouTube channel, which is just uh, Azina Pamai. And thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for all your support and criticism.